Hey, good morning guys. It's another quarantine school special edition. Today we're talking about resumes for the middle schooler. So you are in eighth grade right now. You are looking forward to high school. You're looking into maybe college, maybe some type of job. Whatever your ambitions are, you're going to have to have a job. You're going to have to be able to pay your bills. And one step in that direction is having a resume. A resume doesn't get the, get you the job, but it gets your foot in the door. It gives you the attention of the person that could give you a job. So let's talk about what resumes are. A resume is a personal summary of your professional history and qualifications. It includes information about your education, your work experience, your activities, whether they're in school or out school or a part of a job. You want any honors, any special skills you might have, or your career goals. Sometimes it's good to have a career goal in there saying I've always wanted to be the director of marketing for a major shoe brand. Okay, maybe that maybe that's something that would help you get a job into a major shoe brand marketing department. However, if you put on there that I've always wanted to be the shift manager at Panera, uh, that may not help you in your career goals and you would have to change your resume career goals every time you applied for a new job because you were pretending that you wanted what that job as the epitome of your career. So let's not overstate that. For now, just leave your career goal off of there. Uh, your resume is going to be a little bit of a combination of your report card. It's like an a, a advertisement of making you look really good. It's a little bit of a personal history book showing where you've been and what you've done. And it's showing what is important about you and you are important you are valuable and sometimes you guys right now I, I know it's tough to think that you're valuable to think that um, that you're hireable because you don't have any experience and you don't know a lot of things and you're still learning but I'm going to show you today that you do have super valuable skills that you can sell to an employer to make them want to hire you for that job Four main parts to a resume. Number one is the heading. Number two is education. Number three is skills. And number four is experience. So first one, the heading. This is going to include your contact information. They want to know who you are. So you want to make sure that up at the top, your name is big and bold. And you've got your address and telephone number. You want to have your email address. And really, that's that's all, all you need. It, it should it should be simple, but it should be easy to read. And up at the top, and bold with your name. Your name bold. The rest of it doesn't need to be quite as bold. Uh, I have a lot of experience going through resumes in another profession. Years ago, I was in charge of going through resumes to decide who was going to be hired for the next job position. And as I went through those stacks, if somebody's name wasn't big and bold at the top of the page, it was really easy to forget who they were to get that one mixed in with all of the other resumes that all look about the same. So your name is the most important part about identifying you. Make sure it's big and bold. For your telephone number, if you have a telephone number and somebody calls that and it says, you know, the person you're trying to reach is not here, leave a message. That's fine, that's kind of generic. But if it's got some kind of silly recording on there that, that's going to come off as unprofessional, you wanna make sure that you change that so that it sounds professional. It clearly identifies who you are and um, doesn't turn them off, doesn't give them a bad impression of you. Same thing goes for your email address. So right now, you guys, um, I know in middle school, you guys don't use email too much. You're not used to it, you're still developing email skills. I could do another lesson about that. but. If you have an email address and it is, and I've run into this with students too, they say, you know, um, they send me an email, say, Mr. Fields, I was trying to find out how to do the assignment um, from, and, and the email address is crazygirl at hotmail.com. And I'm like, okay, I, I don't know who crazy girl is. Um, it doesn't reflect well on you if you're applying for a job and you are the crazy girl. Well, there's talking about who to, who to hire for this position and maybe we should hire the crazy girl. Uh, what was her name again? You know, all they're going to remember, remember is the name of your, your email address if you have a really weird email address that either represents you in a negative light or is something really, um, really intent on one of your hobbies that doesn't relate to your job or maybe it ref reflects um, substances or a lifestyle that you're really into but not everybody is appreciating. So 
keep in mind uh, my email address that I use that's not not my school email address but my when I use for all the other things really just has my name and the fact that I'm a teacher that that's one of those things that it's it's professional it's something that anybody can contact me with that and not have to think twice about is this person right for the job of being a teacher okay uh, let's see what else oh check your email ah this is something you make sure your notifications are turned on because if you apply for a job and they email you or contact you by email uh, by the way they're probably more likely to contact you by email than texting you uh, check your email if you're checking your email once a week that's not enough if you've applied for a job you want to check that email once a day twice a day maybe three times a day so that you can reply to them soon there was a time that um, I missed a message it was it was a, uh, a call for an interview and I didn't call them back the same day I called them back like the next day I thought oh, it's, it's probably not a hurry they're setting up e interviews and I called them back the next day and, the, and they had already uh, offered the interview slot time to somebody else I missed an opportunity because I didn't check my messages right away so you the once the interview process starts um, frequently it happens really quickly and you want to be ready for it okay next section is heading you the heading of your uh, no heading we, <coughs> we did heading next section is education when you get further into your educational career and you've gone to some college and you have some degrees behind you the education becomes really important for now you guys are in middle school it doesn't mean a lot but right you're gonna practice education as a listing for your, your resume things to include the name of the school but if it is a ballpoint middle school and you're applying to a job in Sacramento the person is not necessarily going to recognize ballpoint middle school so you might say ballpoint middle school from Lansing Michigan I, I, I'm just making these names up but uh, this this gives you it gives them an idea of uh, like a little bit more about the school otherwise it means nothing to them also you want to identify um, graduation or anticipated graduation date so if you're in school and you're anticipating graduation um, they may know that they want want to know when you're ready to work more so like if you're in high school and you know your graduate anticipated graduation date is June 2021 well that gives them an idea that okay w once they turn 17 18 and they're graduating from high school then um, they could take on more responsibilities more hours at this job and they could get deeper into that particular company that's a good thing so also with if you're identifying your anticipated graduation date when you're a middle schooler that also gives them an idea of uh, how close you are to being fully employable GPA okay so if you are an A student and you have a 4.0 GPA you want to brag about that this is one of those times that you have to be boastful and I run into a lot of students that say I, I don't want to brag about things it's 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 not polite to brag I, I, I'm a modest person I'm I'm just not trying to to boast the resume is the place to boast got some mosquitoes here the resume is the place to boast because if you don't tell this person about you nobody else will it's not like it's you know just somebody in the family or somebody that met your friends and then somebody else will probably say good things about you this is your first step in the door you're often giving a resume to somebody who has never met you before and may never take any effort to meet you unless they see something interesting on this resume use this as an opportunity to say everything good about yourself and right now grades are something you can brag about if you have a C average that's really not something you want to want to brag about it's not that it's bad it's just that it's not exceptional if you have a B average or better you do want to brag about that you want to boast you want to put it on there uh, let's see oh relevant coursework okay so this gets into what can you say about what you've done now you're still in school but say you're applying to a bakery did you take any classes that taught you how to cook hey you could list that on there did you take any classes that taught you skills in math because that would be helpful in operating a cash register and being able to know if the the numbers are right as they are uh, ringing up money for purchases now most of the time you're not gonna have to do the math yourself but if 
it's giving you something that is an incorrect number, you want to be able to catch that and your employer wants to know that you're somebody who's able to catch that. And there are times when the system goes down and you have to do something by hand. And if you can't do math at a certain basic level, that would be concerning. So, uh, but again, this is where you want to stand out from the crowd. So if you just completed your basic math courses, you don't want to brag about that. If you had to have advanced math courses, you could brag about that. If you have certain skills that you took extra years of Spanish, it was beyond the required coursework that people were asking you to, to take, and you could say, hey, I've taken Spanish, I can speak Spanish with our customers or the other em employees that are trying to work with us, that would be an asset, include that. So, Spanish, computer science, if you've taken any computer classes or coding classes, that's always impressive. Marketing, economics, engineering, okay. PLTW. Some of you guys know what that acronym means. Some of you have been involved in a course that involves PLTW. But the typical employer isn't going to know what that means. And this goes for any acronym. If you bring up that I, I was involved in BSA for 16 years, they don't know what that means. You want to make sure that you tell that employer what that means. So you can use the acronym, but you also want to have the words written out so that they know what it means. And then maybe a little description to describe what what value that had. What Were you learning um, how to tie knots? Were you learning how to do engineering? Were you learning how to pr manage projects? A little bit of a description to go with that is really helpful to that employer. All right. Page two, experience. That's the next section. Talk about your experience. Volunteer work is important. Volunteer is easy for you guys to get into. At your age, you may not be able to be employed by something, but maybe there's a church nearby that's looking for volunteers to help um, hand out food to people. Maybe there is a, uh, a net, uh, outdoors nature organization that's handling a, a cleanup of, of the outdoors. Uh, there's, um, let's see, other examples, community service. Maybe you're volunteering to spend time with seniors. You could be uh, having paid positions that are part-time or full-time. It could be clubs, clubs on campus. This is a great opportunity, and this is where you, your brain starts thinking. If I join that Future Business Leaders of America club, then I can put that on my resume, and if I'm getting a job at a business, they're gonna think, hey, this person already is interested in business, that's gonna be a step up for you. Doesn't mean that you have to be a active, active, active member in that club, no. But if you are at least partially involved in that club, you can put it on your resume, and you've made a good choice that will help you get that next job. If you are involved in a club that is uh, something that is supporting uh, social organizations, helping people out, you, maybe you were a buddy to a younger classmate or something like that. Heck, maybe if you were the, the, the younger classmate that was being buddied, you could s explain, I was part of this organization, I never, like, uh, like Webby's or something like that. Were you something that was uh, in a mentorship role? You were being helpful. Or you could even flip that around. You say, I never actually got to be in the mentorship role, but I had a buddy who was an older classmate who was helping me out, teaching me the way around the school, and I really got a lot out of that. So being part of that relationship had a big effect on me that I can carry forth into the workplace. You're selling yourself. You're selling the skills you've gained either by being part of something or being related to something. Summer jobs, if you don't have time to work during the school year, which a lot of times people don't, I never did. Uh, if you don't have time for that, then get a job during the summer and you can list that as work, work experience. Internships, In internships are something that uh, they are either unpaid or paid. Uh, sometimes they are paid well and sometimes often they are not paid well or they're not paid at all but what you go into an internship for is for resume points so you want to be able to put this on the resume that you worked for Nike Nike in the summer of 2007 because you well no, not you but somebody older than you you worked for Nike over the summer to help with a marketing campaign or something so you 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 were learning something from the business in the business at the time and that's really 
why people take internships so they can learn on the job training for something that they, they wouldn't get trained in school in the same way. Uh, you can be careful with those though because some internships have been notoriously abused where they effectively become free labor for the employer and the person who's doing the internship doesn't get as much out of it. So make sure that you're getting what you need out of it. It shouldn't just be free labor. Alright, make sure you describe the experiences that you've had. Describe the guidelines for the duties, like what were you expected to do, your responsibilities, and whatever accomplishments you had. Were you able to reorganize our inventory section to make sure that it was easy to find the toilet paper and the mayonnaise for the back of the restaurant, right? Uh, what were the most relevant skills and qualities? So again, this is something that you don't want to list everything that you've ever done on your resume. If you say that one of your responsibilities for the restaurant was locking the closet and unlocking the closet at the beginning and the end of the day, maybe that's the most not the most relevant to a job that you're applying to. But if you say that you were responsible for greeting people and the job was something that involved customer service, that's a really relevant skill. Put your most relevant info first. The, employer that's looking at your resume is going to look at what's on the resume in a scanning fashion. Literally, he's going to have a stack of resumes and he's going to go, oh, yep, 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 yep. And he's going through one, one page after another and just zipping through it, looking for some key details. I guarantee you, they're not going to read every single word on your resume. They're going to look for, oh, does this person have the job experience that I'm looking for? Does, does it say anything about um, phone experience? I'm looking for somebody who can answer the phone. Does it say anywhere on here that they can answer the phone? You want to make sure that you have those skills listed on your resume. If you don't have them listed on your resume, start thinking about what jobs you can get that would put them on your resume. Use strong action words. Don't say, I was good at answering phones. Say, I was welcoming at answering phones. I was efficient at answering phones. Use a thesaurus. Look up some good words because you don't want to just put something on there if it doesn't make you look good. And then accomplishments. If you got employee of the month for one month for attendance or for sales or for just because they drew your name out of a hat, honestly, it doesn't matter. If you, if you were student of the month, hey, student of the month, has anybody ever got a certificate or a student of the month or a teacher I appreciate you award of some sort? Put that on your resume. That's important. It doesn't, doesn't matter what it is. It, as long as it is an award, a recognition of you, that's something you can brag about and you can put it on your resume to make you look good. All right. This is another thing. People your age, well, people even older, get frustrated. Looking for a job can be a very depressing experience. And you have to remember, you are valuable. You are valuable right now, right this minute, for you. Because you are you, and because you have skills, and because you have opportunity to be better for that company and to improve that company. A lot of times people say, I can't get a job because I don't have experience that shows that I could do that job, but I can't get experience to do that job unless I get a job that gives me experience to be able to do that job because I can't get experience to do that job to show that I can do that job. It's this vicious cycle. But you do have experience. You do have skills right now in middle school. And I want you to look at the examples that I've put on the sample document that I, I put together on the slideshow that gives you ideas of things that you can put on your resume to show the skills that you already have right now. If some of these are not something that would be on your resume today, you have time. You're eighth graders. You can start finding these skills, finding ways to put these on to get this experience. Babysitting. Have you guys ever watched somebody and been paid for it? Great. List babysitting as work experience. If you have watched your baby brother or baby sister for an hour while mom went out to the store, you can list that. That is, that is a level of responsibility that you were taking on a challenge and somebody trusted you with it. It doesn't matter if you had a tough experience with it and it didn't go so well. That's still experience and you learn from your experiences, right? Uncle Joe's restaurant. If you have a relative who lets you work 
at the restaurant on weekends or maybe when you went to visit him one time he let you organize the silverware tray right that that's experience you were you were working in a restaurant okay maybe you weren't paid for it maybe it was only for an afternoon but that was experience use that uh, Aerojet STEM Expo is that, that's another example have you been involved in a science fair or some type of exhibition did you do history day list that that's experience that's that's hugely hugely valuable for showing that you go above and beyond you push yourself you challenge yourself employers want that were you a TA for anything? You could show that you were a TA and you were held responsibility, you were able to take directions from someone. Were you a group group leader, even a group leader for a, a class project? That's something you can list on your resume. Part of this is marketing. Part of it, you're, you're saying, okay, a group leader in a class project is, is, everybody had to be a group leader. It wasn't something special. But you're marketing yourself. And at the end of the day, this is going to show the things that you're experienced at and the things that make you valuable. This is, this is real. It's, it's not lying. It's not making it up. It's showing what you have to offer. Uh, were you in Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts or you volunteered at your church or something like that? If it was a long running thing or if you just did one afternoon, one workshop, one weekend, that's fine. List that. Put that on there. Okay. Now, here's the twist. If you haven't done one of these things, now is your opportunity to start doing them. It's not unreasonable or uncommon to, for someone to do something just because it looks good on a resume. That's a totally reasonable th reason to do something. I, I've done that myself. A lot of my colleagues have done that. Go, oh, I went to a weekend workshop to learn more about this type of education, or I, I took a summer class at UC Davis to learn more about this particular topic because I wanted to make sure I was, I was better prepared for teaching it. You want to make sure that you're able to show off your best qualities. You're going to start making choices for your life now to make your life better. Building your resume makes your job hunt easier. So now my challenge to you, take a look at the slideshow, listen to the lecture again if you need to, but start building a resume for yourself now. You don't have to share it with me, just show yourself the valuable things that you have and if you see holes in there that you'd like to improve, that sets some goals for you for the coming years, right? All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.